modern ocean freighter can carry over 15,000 container loads of cargo, and getting them from the ship to the truck or train to you is the responsibility of today's career, the longshore worker. You must be Glenn. And you must be Brian. I am. Nice to meet you. A longshore worker does various jobs. It could be a crane operator, it could be a gantry operator, drive machinery like uh, reach stackers and bomb carts, load logs, load grain, work the rail. I specialize in driving cranes. That's how I move the cargo. We're going into the maintenance shop here now. This is where all the equipment including the cranes, the reach stackers, the bomb carts, okay. the forklifts, anything at all is maintained in this shop here. Sure. And now how does that work? Is there, are these uh, mechanics on site or are these launcher workers repairing and maintaining these vehicles? They're actually mechanics, electricians, welder fabricators that actually work at the longshore hall. Okay, so they are longshore workers, but they do have their trade as well. That's right. I find out where I'm working and who I'm working with, and the foreman gives me my list of specific tasks that I have to do, and I relate to my checker. This is the right bay, this is the right cargo, this is the right container. They verify it with me, and we get that cargo in and out of here. Longshore consists of uh, three shifts. Shift one is 8 o'clock till 4.30. Shift two is 4.30 till 1, 1 a.m. in the morning. And shift three is 1 a.m. to 8 a.m. One crane operator is responsible for how, loading how many? Well, in order to be an entry-level uh, crane driver driving these things, you have to do at least 20 an hour. 20 containers in one hour? In one hour. I grew up on the coast and I always liked ships. And through connections of uh, friends I know and family, there was opportunities on the waterfront on the west coast. So I jumped the ride from the east coast to the west coast and uh, here I am. Never look back. Right now we're heading up to the cab of the crane. Sounds good. I'm taking the elevator, you're taking the stairs. Glenn. See you up there, Brian. You don't need a high education, but you gotta have common sense. Whew. It's a long way down, Glenn. This isn't for everybody. No, it certainly isn't for everybody. We're uh, 125 feet off the ground wow. here. Now this is the operator's cab, right? This is the operator's cab where you pick up the containers and load the container, discharge the container. Oh, <laughs> plexiglass floors, eh? I guess you gotta be able to see straight down and onto the dock. That's your vision. So this is where the operator sits for an eight hour shift. You work in both control knobs. You're picking up, you're moving it around, you're dropping it back off, you've got cameras up close. And this is the piece of machinery we were looking at earlier. This is the spreader right beneath us. Yeah, okay. Seeing you're not the uh, take of the driver, I will take control of this crane. Sure, sure. Right now we're in a 20-foot mode. Yeah. We will go into the 40-foot mode. As you can see, our head is uh, expanding. We have four flippers on each end that will help us guide us onto the can. Flippers are down, and now we will uh, latch onto the can. And now you've got to be able to pull 20 of these container units an hour? You got to do at least 20 an hour. The way to get into it is go where, where the ships go and that will be to any major port on the west coast. Find out when the recruitment is happening and get into the recruitment. For a new recruit, first of all, you do the laboring job, and then when those openings come for training, you apply for the training and then prove yourself that you can drive. You learn on a forklift first, then you can learn on a bomb cart, then you go on to reach stack, and then, then go up to dock gantry. It could take six to 10 years to get up to drive a dock gantry. You gotta be able to communicate. Communication is a big thing, because every day is a brand new ship, brand new groups that you work with. So you're, you're, you're moving this whole cab and you're moving the crane at the same time, you're going up and down, left and right. Plus you have to uh, uh, look at all the obstacles around you. Right now I've, I've landed on the can with the spreader. Yeah. As you can see, I got a white light and a green light. White light and a green light, yeah. But I need a red light in order to lock. Then the flipper's gotta come up, we got two minutes to get this thing from here onto the ship and back and get another one. The perks in this industry that people work towards is probably the benefits and the pensions. I couldn't uh, take an office job. I like going out into the field, I like going out into the weather and, and doing a different job. So this whole thing, you've really got to be good with your hands to have this kind of a position. You certainly have to be good with your hands. You got to have good hand-eye coordination. You got to uh, be able to think ahead. What are you doing next? because this thing moves too fast. It's very unforgiving. And when you're carrying 40 tons in the air, you, you, you can't afford to make mistakes. It's a very exciting job. It's very flexible. And uh, as long as you're diligent, 
you can end up with a good, pretty good future. Once again, I'm Brian for Career Trek, reminding you that this career could be yours. I'll see you next time.